Good evening and welcome to First Thursdays at the Marin County Law Library. We're delighted tonight to have special guests from the Marin County Department of Probation, and I'd like to give a brief introduction to each one of them. I will take a moment to thank our law librarian, Stephen Richards, for making this possible. Stephen is the wondrous person in the background who keeps the law library going, um, is working closely with the Bar Association and other groups to get our program of lawyers in the law library back up and running. We are greatly appreciative for him to have come on board and to be with us tonight. When all of you listening tonight actually here tonight, have an opportunity to stop by the law library, go in and introduce yourself. I think you'll be delighted at our new addition to our group. Tonight we're lucky to have members of the Marin County Department of Probation. That includes Marlon Washington, who is the Chief Probation Officer of Marin County. He joined us in July 2020. And if you're at all curious, go to the Marin Bar Association, and you can find a piece that he penned shortly after that. Prior to coming to us, he served as the superintendent of Napa County's Juvenile Hall. Mr. Washington is a graduate of UC Davis and started his career back in 1997 at the Contra Costa County Probation Department. He advanced to supervising roles in both the adult and juvenile divisions, and in 2015, he became superintendent of the youth jail in Napa, where he oversaw 37 employees and a $6.8 million budget. He's a member of the California Association of Probation Institution Administrators and the California Probation, Parole, and Correctional Association. He has experience as an academic outreach coordinator, a boys camp supervisor, a case management counselor, and a youth services program administrator. The gentleman is involved in a speakers bureau that is reaching out to students in our community. And if you're very lucky, you might be able to catch him at one of your children's events in the future. We also welcome tonight Alicia Krupinski, who's been with the Marin County Probation Department since 1999. She's worked in all divisions in various capacities and units, and in the last eight years, she has served the department as the director of the adult division. Eric Olson has been with the department since 2004 and started his career as a deputy probation officer in the juvenile division. He has worked at all levels of the department across all divisions, serving the last five at the director level, overseeing operations in the juvenile hall and juvenile probation departments. Finally, we welcome the director of juvenile hall, Tori Creighton, who is tw in 2019 was promoted to this position and has made a career here in Marin County. We are extremely lucky to have these busy people with us. For those of you with a long memory, you will remember we had Cindy Ayala present in October of 2021 on the restorative justice program that is here and affiliated with this very department. After tonight, if you're interested, that is posted on our YouTube channel, and we are glad to share that with the community. Without further ado, let's welcome this group and hear what they have to tell us about this remarkable department. Thanks so much for joining us. Mr. Washington? Well, thank you for that warm welcome and acknowledging all of our years of experience. I was trying to total it up and, you know, my math skills kind of troubled, uh, but <clears throat> teaching you guys and educating you guys on probation is very important. And probation and criminal law is a period of supervision over an offender ordered by the court instead of serving time in custody. And probation includes supervision of those conditionally released from prison on parole as well. Probation, what I always say, is the linchpin of criminal justice. And probation collaborates with the courts, the DA, the public defender, health and human services, as well as other local law enforcement agencies. And as we go through our slide presentation, I wanted to share with you as well what our mission is. The mission of the Moran County Probation Department is to further justice and community safety and to hold offenders accountable while promoting their rehabilitation. And rehabilitation is the key to their success. 
to reduce recidivism. Probation officers actually are trained to safely connect system involved individuals to supports that they need. That could be different things in the community, uh, connecting them to schools, social services, mentoring and pro-social activities, education and employment, because we always want to reduce those different insecurities that people have. Uh, living, and we utilize evidence-based programs and rehabilitation as well as family support. And last but not least, one of the major things is health and wellness services. So we have actually three divisions in our probation department, and you'll be hearing from the different directors of those divisions. We have our adult division, our juvenile division, as well as our juvenile hall. So without further ado, I'll pass it over to Alicia to talk about our adult division. Thank you, Chief. Um, within our adult division, we have six uh, physical units our pretrial unit, our investigations unit, alternatives to custody, supervision, AB 109, um, and our medium risk unit. So I kind of grouped supervision and AB 109 together. Um, but our pretrial unit has, uh, bail has primarily been a release option for those awaiting for court proceedings. And we have recognized that there is some disproportionate numbers of, being pers of persons being held in jail in pretrial status because they were not able to financially bail out. Um, we recognize there was an alternative or a need for an alternative, and we created a pretrial program. So we use a validated risk assessment tool to actually determine if the offender, um, what the likelihood that they'll come back to court and what's the likelihood that they will reoffend. And if they score low enough, we make recommendations to the court and offer some pretrial services and monitoring to allow them for, to be released from the jail pending further court matters. Um, it was really important for us to be able to um, Try and reduce the jail population as well as making sure that the, those that were in custody needed to be in custody and weren't being held because they couldn't afford to financially get out. Um, another one of our programs is our, 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 our alternatives to custody. Um, for those who are sentenced to court, in court for days to be served in jail, we actually try and get them out of jail into an alternative program. We have a work release program where work is being done um, within the community and giving back directly to the community by the hours that are being served. So they have served eight hours of community service work at um, specific nonprofit organizations, going straight back to the community instead of having to do time in custody. And we also have a county parole program where we supervise some of the those who are sentenced to a longer term of jail time on electronic monitoring or um, alcohol monitoring as needed, um, and make sh making sure we're providing them with some support and services outside of the jail setting. So we're really trying to make sure that we're not incarcerating people who don't need to be incarcerated. Our investigations team is amazing. They write really well-rounded reports offering uh, not only just the elements of the offense to the courts, but the victim statements, the client statements, and all social factors to really be able to deliver the courts an appropriate sentencing recommendation. And that they really set the foundation for success for those that are coming on, on to probation. They, they provide the, the foundation and the bones of what we're gonna do moving forward. And then our supervision deputies are um, really responsible for accountability and that is our primary function. However, we really recognize that we need to help our clients be, um, get what they need to be better so that they won't reoffend and come back to the, back into the system. So we're providing services and support to our clients so they can be successful. We work closely with community-based organizations to provide treatment, uh, job opportunities, housing resources. We contract with several recovery coaches to provide peer-to-peer -peer support for our clients that are struggling with recovery. Uh, we support the use of SLEs for clients who need the structure of a sober living or environment for success. We are uh, in tune with the needs of our victims as well. And so victim communication, helping them know what their rights are, ensuring that they have safety plans is also key. And we have a robust, a robust restorative justice program. I know Cindy was here in October and kind of already went over that with you all, but um, that is through the probation department where our, we have facilitated to work with the clients and the victims individually, and then with the goal of bringing them together eventually to um, get to a point of making them whole <clears throat> and, and being able to um, hear and listen to both e each other's sides. We have four collaborative courts. And the, in a collaborative court setting, we work closely with our criminal justice partners, with the DA, the public defender, recovery coaches, the courts. They meet weekly or bi-weekly to talk about um, the needs of the clients and really trying to provide full wraparound services for the client. We have an adult drug court 
a family violence court and mental health court. And we just are hitting almost a year, I think, Chief, is it a year in July for our veterans court. So super excited to have that um, on a cadre of collaborative courts. And then for me, the next slide I think is our wall of change. So we recognize that our clients um, don't always get recognized for their successes. And some of the successes are small and some of them are huge. And um, so we have created a wall of change where we actually nominate clients who have hit some sort of major milestone in their life, whether it's completing probation or they just made it through treatment and, they're, and that's been a huge barrier for them and they finally got to that. They're recommend, recommended by their probation officers to be nominated for, to the Wall of Change Committee. The Wall of Change Committee actually reads through and makes sure that the victims are um, being attended to as well. And then we post the pictures and the stories of our clients up on the wall of our lobby. So as uh, new clients are coming in, they're seeing the successes. And then we have an opportunity yearly to celebrate the successes of our, of our clients who actually have made it to the wall and sustain themselves being up on the wall, um, supporting them and being uh, celebrated is a huge thing for us. It's For a lot of them, it's the first time they've been um, celebrated for their successes and to be able to see that pure joy as they're being acknowledged for the hard work that they've done and getting to either successfully complete, complete probation or pass some of those huge uh, barriers that they've had and then be on the wall is, is impressive. And I think it goes on to Eric for me. Thank you. Oh, I thought we were gonna watch the wall change video. Uh, so if, if you haven't seen that, um, get that yeah. link, click it, 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 it it's on YouTube. Yeah, we just put um, the link up. We're not going to watch it. I'm Eric Olson, uh, Director of the Juvenile Probation Department. Um, thanks to the um, Law Library for having us here. Um, juvenile Services or the Juvenile Probation Department. Um, the focus for us really is behavior change. Um, we want to give kids, youth, a pathway away from the criminal justice system. So for us, the um, kind of three pillars of accountability, treatment, and opportunity are critical for us, you know, to ensure that we aren't just focused on uh, compliance. You know, we're we're uh, ensuring we're assessing what youth needs are and and um, programming them appropriately um, and getting them the appropriate treatment. Um, so we're comprised of three uh, units. The first unit is the intake in investigations unit. Any new referral from law enforcement comes through that that unit. So if a young person ends up in juvenile hall. Um, and has no history, intake will, will, will handle that. Um, we're very focused on structured, de uh, structured decision-making tools to ensure consistency of decision-making across all POs. So um, it won't end up that probation officer A has a different decision than probation officer B based upon some inherent bias. You know? So um, those are very important for us. Um, diversion, we, uh, I was doing some number crunching today in 2020, 50% of the new cases that we were referred to us were um, diverted to um, either a community-based organization or handled on an informal basis. Um, and then in 2021, 53% per, 53 um, of the cases we, we saw um, were, di di were diverted as well. Um, so some of the other dispositional options that, that are available to us in juvenile probation, um, 654.2, it's a court-ordered informal probation. Um, there's 725A non-wardship probation, and of course, 602 wardship probation as well. Um, and our supervision and placement unit, any youth, so uh, if a kid rates um, medium or high risk on a validated risk and needs assessment in the intake unit, and they're um, determined to either be on informal probation or formal probation, they're transferred to the supervision unit. Every youth there is further um, case planned and um, assessed for, for their risks and, and needs. Um, the interesting thing about the current um, uh, program we're using for, for, for this assessment is it gives us an ACEs score. So every youth that, that's under supervision, we've got a good sense about what trauma uh, or what role trauma has played with, uh, with, with their past. So uh, it gives us a sense about, well, what kind of mental health services are, are, are needed. Um, so everything we do with, with uh, the supervision of youth is directed at reducing risk factors and increasing protective factors. Um, and so with that, you know, we, we connect them with community-based services for treatment. 
Um, and that could look like drug and alcohol treatment for some youth, mental health treatment, cognitive behavioral therapy, employment services, community service work. Um, and of course, we, we have a system, a structured system of sanctions and incentives to um, try to move kids away from antisocial behaviors and more towards pro-social behaviors. Marlon, next slide. Um, and if you didn't know, um, there are youth on probation that end up in, in foster care. Um, proba uh, Marin County Probation Department is one of very few, if I don't know if there's any other that has um, a resource family program only for probation use. We have five local foster care beds. So a kid that ends up uh, needing to be removed from his family for whatever reason, uh, we're trying to not send them to out-of-county group, group home programs and try to keep them local and build a system of support around them. Um, and so right now of the five bed or five beds, we have four youth in, in those beds. So those are formerly in five, you know, five, 10 years ago, those kids very likely would have been out of county um, in either uh, a foster home or a group home setting um, and not uh, and have and would not have had the opportunity to maintain connections to their school, to their family members who, who are local, to their, su their su uh, support system that, that's local. So for us, we're very proud of that. Um, and uh, Portal Mental Health Unit, uh, we are also one of, very, one of the very few probation departments that has a mental health unit built into our juvenile probation de de department. Um, right now, that unit is only comprised of the supervisor. We've had some issues over the pandemic with, with staffing, um, but we are recruiting and, and hiring right now. So if you know anyone who wants to come work for us um, as a mental health practitioner, we, we, are, um, we are hiring. Um, and then we also are one of the very few probation departments that has a, a in-house youth employment program. It's called Youth Working for Change. It's a year-round employment and internship program um, designed to serve any youth in Marin County. You do not have to be on probation to benefit from this service. Uh, we also uh, work with many county departments during the summer to offer what's called Career Explorers. Career Explorers is a um, summer paid internship program within the county Marin government system. So we have kids who've been interning in the DA's office, public defender's office, HNHS, uh, DPW, we even, uh, even had some working with us at the probation department. Um, and so every summer about 30 youth get exposed to uh, a career in, in county government. And lastly, but it's not on the slide, um, we are also um, funding and supporting prevention programs in three of the school districts in, in Marin County, uh, the Nevada Unified District, Santa Fe City Schools and Bayside MLK. We pulled down a grant from the state um, because we were acknowledging that you know we we get kids on probation and they're finally getting services and sometimes it took them being placed on probation to get services um, and you know through our reducing ethnic disparities committee it's a committee that that can uh, meets to talk about the overrepresentation of certain populations in the juvenile justice system it was determined that. Um, why don't we try to get upstream and start to address youth needs prior to them being arrested or cited or brought, brought to juvenile hall. So we're in year three of this program. It has been a, ben, a huge benefit to the Nevada Unified School District, uh, San Rafael City Schools and uh, Bayside MLK as well. So um, there's a lot more to juvenile. There's been a lot of changes in the last five years, SB 823, the closure of DJJ, um, the creation of the, the secure track. Um, and so we, we, it's kind of beyond the, the, the scope of this um, meeting to talk about that. But if you have questions about anything regarding to uh, juvenile probation, um, I'd be ha happy to talk to you about that. So I will stop talking and kick it over to Tori. Actually, I think Tori's audio is having a problem. Um, so, Tori, do you want me to handle your your slides for you? Okay. So this I is... can I can go through it, Eric. Okay. If you okay. want me to? So, Juvenile right, thanks, Hall Chief. and Tori having an auto problem. Sorry about that. Technical difficulties. All things COVID. This is what happens. 
Um, <laughs> the Marin County Juvenile Hall brings in programming from various sources to assist our youth with positive decision making. The whole goal is for them to return to the community with skills to remain law abiding and increase those coping skills so they can eliminate those stressors that bring them back into contact with us. Our whole goal is to provide them healthy outlets for and for working with their community and school as well at home and providing them pro social skills. So there are several offerings that we have in juvenile hall. And just to name a few of them, I won't go through the whole list, but we have various program offerings at juvenile hall from the outside different community programs that come in, but to highlight Bay Area Community Resources, as well as Huckleberry Youth Services, Narcotics Anonymous. We do provide church services, art programming, thinking for a change. Um, I would be remiss not to say that we do offer visitation to parents and various therapeutic groups and life skills training. What you have to understand, Juvenile Hall is governed by Title 15. And with Title 15, there are certain stipulations of things that we have to provide you. And that's including recreation, as well as school services, as well as the therapeutic services and other, other things as gender responsiveness, trauma-informed care and traumatic things, and also the training of our staff. So Juvenile Hall is a safe place for our youth to re receive these services. So when they return to the community, they're better served and better able to cope with their situation. So when we talk about probation, some people might say, why does probation work? Probation is our alternative to incarceration. We always wanna break what we call the school to prison pipeline. Everyone knows who have done their research is that they build prisons based on, you know, studies that are done in kindergarten and early elementary school. So breaking that whole cycle. Probation is made up of trained experts who are prepared to ses successfully manage trauma and other needs of adults and youth. So we provide robust training in various areas for our staff. Probation connects service and need in order to enhance safety and restoration. As you guys mentioned earlier, as the restorative justice piece is very important to probation. Probation also delivers sustainable collaborative community safety initiative. And that's what we do. As you know, we actually recently launched the Clean Slate that was mentioned earlier, and that's a collaborative with our criminal justice partners, as well as Health and Human Services. Um, we have Moran specific data, but I don't wanna get too far into the weeds of communicating that, but I wanted to talk about more of our collaborative services with our public defender, our district attorney's office, our health and human services, our sheriff's department, and other agencies. Oftentimes you don't see that, being that I've come from three counties and working in three counties, the network here in Marin County is totally different in the collaborative work that we do. For us and our community-based organizations and the partnerships that we have gained and worked with, with the Multicultural Center of Marin, with the Marin County Cooperation Team, North Marin Community Services, West Marin Community Services, Youth Transforming Justice, the Phoenix Project, Opening the World, Bay Area Community Resources, Center for Employment and Opportunities, and Seneca Family of Agencies. These are opportunities that we have gained in a department. And I think these relationships benefit the youth as well as the community and the adults in our community. So with that, I'm going to open the floor for questions and I'll stop sharing this slide deck. Stephen, do we have any questions out there? If not any questions, I would like to thank a lot of our staff members who are out here that have been integral parts of the success of Marin County Probation. 
uh, and thank you guys for attending. But the success of our team as a leadership team, we owe to the staff that we have. Our restorative justice program, actually facilitated by Cindy Ayala, that's an amazing program, which you guys heard about before. But without her, how could we talk about restorative justice? Our wall of change that we mentioned earlier and we highlighted, the first time I learned about the wall of change, I actually attended a presentation in Sacramento where David Cole, Cindy Ayala, and former Chief Mike Daly was presenting on the topic. So it's just amazing to actually have a team that is so dynamic and well-versed in probation and the services and what we do for our community. So I would be remiss not to have mentioned that and the years of service that you have here with this team. All of us, you know, over 50 years of service here. So it's amazing to represent. So without, if we have any questions, um, let's, let's open Chief the floor. Washington. Yes. Could I could I mention something that I read um, as I was preparing for this event that I found really amazing? The Public Policy Institute of California put out a report about probation in California a few years ago, and I was astounded to realize that probation is the most widely used form of correctional supervision in the state, and it's also the most cost effective. I'm not sure how many Californians understand the differences in in what all of our institutions cost, our forms of um, uh, correctional supervision, prison, jail, and parole, and also the idea that probation defers to a county responsibility. Do you have any thoughts about that and how this this county operates? So if you want to talk, the cost for a prisoner to be in custody is about thirty-three dollars to $60,000 a year. So imagine how many people we can serve actually out of custody when you have thousands of prisoners in custody. So you could, you could do quick economics, you could do quick numbers with regards to that. But the level of what happens with the crime and going through the entire court process, what that cost would be. When we have a pretrial that we actually can get offenders out of custody earlier and monitor them in the community versus actually those costly numbers of having them detained in a facility. So a lot of that is mitigating those costs, but it's more about, it's less about cost, but it's more about community safety and ensuring the safety of the environment, ensuring that we don't have those that are more criminally sophisticated in the community and those that are needing to be in a secure environment or in a secure environment, but not exposing those that don't need such a secure environment and providing them the services in the community. So our focus is investing more in the community to keep people out of you know, incarceration to provide them services to better the community. So yes, it's very costly to house someone in jail or in prison, but if you can actually provide them the services and lower the populations throughout California, then we're doing our service. And as you know, a lot of work shifted from parole, who was usually working with all the individuals coming out of prison to our local probation departments. And that was once state parole and now it's more county driven. And we're actually providing those services through our AB 109 is where we actually work with those that are coming out of prison. And I hope that answers your question. Can you tell us about the success rate of probationers here in, in Marin? Well, I guess, well oh, go, go ahead. Chief, I, I, interesting, you just, I was crunching some numbers today, the last two years, the last two years, are um, very different for, for juvenile probation. Our, our overall referral numbers went way down. Um, but what didn't go down was the acuity and the severity of the issues that the young people presented with here. You know, um, So as far as mental health, we all know that the pandemic wreaked havoc on, on youth mental health. Um, substance abuse issues, um, I think. Uh, so when you think about those issues, 
Um, success rates for us the last two years, 80% uh, closed successfully in 2020 and 78% closed successfully in 2021. So for us, that, that means a kid completed um, their terms and conditions of probation exhibited some level of behavior change um, sufficient enough so that either the judge in court opted to close the case successfully or the probation officer, if it was an informal case, um, opted to close the case as a successful case. And that has, whether that case is closed successfully or unsuccessfully has bearings on um, whether a case, where and or when and how a case can be sealed. All juvenile cases eventually get sealed with very few exceptions. Um, but I think for, for us to have 78, 80% of kids terminating su successfully is, is, is awesome. So I'm, 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 I was very proud to see that today, so. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. And one of the things I wanted to mention is we do have what we call a Marine Compass page. Uh, thank you to Samantha Klein, I think she's on here. Um, the Marin Compass page actually shares our story and our success story. And our focus was to have improved success rates. And we have been doing that in Marin County with regards to our success rates of people completing probation. Chief, there, there was a comment uh, from FJM Grimsley II. Can we hear more about successes? Is there anything anecdotal? that um about probation successes or our successes in our careers um some of the things that we've actually with a wall of change is a perfect example if someone wants to provide an example of one of our wall of change individuals actually chief i just was pulling up a, an email that we received on wednesday from um a parent who sent us an email from adult drug court so as much as it's um, from a parent, it wasn't about an adult, but it was about how their son had gone through um, youth court and worked in the juvenile system, but then had rolled over into the adult system. And they were really worried about how they're, they were convinced they were gonna lose their child. Um, and yes, I know it was an adult, but it is still their child. And they, they sent us a very thankful letter of gratitude. Um, he successfully completed adult drug court. He worked really closely with our recovery coach, Alan Miller. Um, they thanked Josh Davis, who's our adult drug court um, probation officer, about just the work that we've done to really wrap this person, this young man around and give him the support and the accountability he needs as long as well as the support he needed to be um, rehabilitated. He's, he was provided treatment, he's provided um, housing, given him everything he could be to be successful. And we really do want, as much as accountability is key, we really want our clients to not just get through probation and an adult, we have an, about an 80% success rate as well. We don't want them just to get through and click the box of an access rate. We want to see the change and have them not come back to us again. And we know that we, to do that, we need to really provide some robust services up front so that they can get those pro-social behavior changes moving forward. And he's not on the wall yet, but I have a feeling we'll be seeing a recommendation for him soon. Thank you, Alicia. And if you want to talk about career success, there's a total of 59 chiefs in the state of California. Uh, there's 58 counties. And one of the things is with that, having a, you have large counties, small counties, medium sized counties. And the thing is, is having a dynamic team. I believe having a dynamic team is so important in connecting to the community, understanding implicit biases understanding the population that we serve, because we tend to work with communities of color and educating our team and staff on that. And we are very culturally competent in our department. We have a lot of training and robust training in order to assist in working with our communities. So that's one of the most important things. How can the community help out and, and or help out and get involved? One of the things is messaging and connecting people to services that they need. Oftentimes there's barriers for individuals who have been system involved. So when that happens is a lot of times they can't even make it past go or make it past the application process. So looking at, okay, do we open opportunities for system involved individuals? That's where it starts at. Also the food insecurities, 
are we having opportunities to provide food and where they can have opportunities so they have shelter and places to stay? Because when you come out of jail, prison, if you don't have these opportunities, you're kind of already so many steps behind. Here in Marin County, we do have recovery coaches. So recovery coaches actually connect with an individual coming out of jail and connects them to services. It's so much, if we can be the liaison to reduce all those common barriers that people face when they've been you know, involved in a system is very helpful. So connecting to the community, if you have job opportunities for them, giving them an opportunity, but also giving them a chance. If you actually set the structure and the parameters so strict for an individual, they're set up to fail. Give them opportunities and sometimes repeated opportunities. We have construction trades program and other offerings, but if we only give them the one opportunity and they fail and they don't have that success, then we've hurt them and then they won't return or they won't try again. So I think that's very important for the community to give opportunity to individuals. And thank you for that question. Chief Washington, what advice would you give a young person who's interested in pursuing a career with the probation office? Well, we have internship opportunities. I would actually, first step I would do is actually take a compass, draw a circle and see how far you wanna work. Look at all the counties. Some counties are larger, some are smaller, but there's entry level positions for probation counselors, juvenile hall counselors, juvenile institutional officers. They call them different names in different counties, but that's the entry level job. You only need a two year degree, uh, AA degree, sometimes 60 units, sometimes 30 units, just to get in the door to work with you. That's something you can apply for. And if you aspire to be a probation officer, which requires a four-year degree, then you will want to have your bachelor's degree and apply. I always say, you know, group homework, getting that experience, boys, girls, clubs, getting opportunity to re any kind of residential program, Families First, Seneca, to look and explore, but you don't have to have experience to start in the entry level. So getting your degree, going online, filling out an interest card, and basically applying to take the test. I would say looking at your background, making sure you have a clean background, but we are offering opportunities for individuals that ha may have been system involved, but we have to understand, was that just a mistake or what happened and what occurred? And we're in a, basically we're in the business of forgiving, moving on and saying change. So every individual can change. So we want to reach out and try to educate people earlier on the probation career. A lot of people don't know that this is a great career. It's a balance between social work and law enforcement, but a lot of people don't know about this gym in probation. We do a lot of amazing things, as Alicia described, all the different courts we work in. Um, if you wanted to be a police officer, we do a lot of that in our specialized units, high risk units and different things, investigations. If you wanted to be a social worker, we do a lot of those connections to services, as I've mentioned. So therefore, it's one of those unique positions that people don't know about. So I would explore all the different local counties. We have the different probation departments, 58 counties to really explore those opportunities. Thank you. Um, just a quick question. Do you know, I guess, roughly percentage wise, how many of the youth in parole are also like in like the foster system? I know you mentioned the bed number, but like a rough percentage total. Um, hi, Stephen. Um, as far as youth in foster care, Overall, for um, it, it's uh, if there's a hundred kids on probation, um, the average placement caseload is ten to fifteen youth. So for in Marin County, for probation um, involved foster youth, I think the number is probably not more than fifth at the current moment. It's not more than fifteen. However, um, there are kids who transition out of foster care into what's called AB12, extended foster care. So we do have a number of, of those youth as well. Um, 
but the, the numbers of youth in foster care is much higher at our partners, um, children and family services. They, they have um, much, much higher numbers. But interestingly enough, Marin County is now a dual status county. What that means is that a youth can be concurrently open in the child welfare system and in the probation system. Um, and what that enables us to do is be really creative in meeting the needs of the family. Um, and if you know anything about family systems, sometimes the kid is just a symptom that there's a deeper problem. And we've always had an issue in probation and really holding families accountable, parents accountable. Um, so when, it's, when there's a clear need, um, a kid can be concurrently open in both systems and the parents can be held accountable. We actually had a recent case where um, the parent was, because CFS was involved, forced to go to treatment and forced to leave, leave the home and the, the, the youth's behavior miraculously corrected course and, and this youth is doing much better now. So um, that's just a, a side story, but um, yeah, we, we, we probably have, I think 15 youth in some form of foster care, either an out-of-county placement or local foster care or some phase of extended foster care, which they can be in up till age 21. And one of the questions here is about basically clearing an individual's criminal record. And I'm going to kick it over to Alicia to answer that one and also kind of share with about our clean slate that we're doing. If I could kick that over to you, Alicia. Sure. Uh, so clearing up the criminal record is really about your expungement and the, the public defender and the DA's office are working really closely with probation on a clean slate program. We actually had an event last night in San Rafael. Um, it's an application process. The application goes to the public defender's department. Um, they share it with uh, all the local agencies to make sure that the, the agencies clear out their stuff. Um, I talked with Mr. David Sutton last night. He said it takes about two to three weeks from really start of process to um, kicking it off and getting it going. So it's, it's an application process. Not everybody um, is granted the expungement. Part of that is being uh, clearing out some of the things that you can clear out. So making sure that you've hopefully completed probation successfully, um, maybe not 100% perfectly, but gotten through some of those um, navigations. Paying off your restitution is huge. Um, so making sure that those basic uh, foundations that the court has set up for success are there. But the, the public defender and the district attorney really are the ones that handhold through that expungement process. You can't clear your record while you're on probation. So we don't really have a, a role in it until afterwards with just encouraging and recommending the clients to get off, helping the clients get off successfully and then recommending that they be granted the expungement process. And so as mentioned, the Clean Slate program, actually what we do with, it was a, another thing that we came up with with the DA as well as the public defender, health and human services and probation. And we're taking that to different communities throughout Moran County in order for the communities that are disproportionately impacted and other counties as well do the clean slate program as well. So it's not just Moran County specific, but it's Moran County specific. If you've had a crime or you committed a crime in Moran County, you would have to attend that clean slate. If you did a crime in Contra Costa, you would have to go to their clean slate, Alameda County, uh, you would have to go to their clean slate. Any other questions? Could you briefly describe for folks that may not be familiar with this concept, the difference of summary informal versus felony or formal probation? You want me to tackle that one, Chief? There you go. <laughs> um, so yeah, in general, probation only supervises um, felony cases with the exception of third time DUI offenders, um, some drug and alcohol offenses and uh, domestic violence cases. So if it's a misdemeanor shoplifting, a misdemeanor, um, some of the lower level misdemeanor crimes, they're, they're put on what they call court probation. Um, and it can get a little misleading when you read the paper, they'll be like, yeah, they were on probation, we're in county. Well, they're on court probation and that they really don't have anyone that they need to answer to. The idea is they are given a list of conditions to follow things that they need to turn in, they turn into the court. It doesn't ever go through our probation department. So it's a little misleading. It is court probation. It's not Marin County Probation Department probation. Um, for those that are on um, supervised probation, they're actually given um, a 
the referred up to us in pro the probation department. We write the recommendation for sentencing reports with conditions of probation to be followed. And then they're assigned to a probation officer based on the risk to reoffend. Um, and they're given the uh, a probation officer to really structure and help support them through their probationary process. So there is um, court probation, there's regular supervised probation through our probation department, and there's diversion cases as well. Um, so the DA has actually been, DA and public defender have been working closely and putting more and more folks out on a diversion program, which is it's kind of a, a, an agreement that over the next year, I'm gonna do these things. And if I do them well, I won't, um, my charges will, will be dropped and I won't go forward with the prosecution. Um, we particularly don't um, follow and, and supervise diversion cases, except for in the case of mental health, we've just recently started helping supervise. And I, I don't want to say supervise, more monitoring um, diversion because we don't want to insert ourselves more than we need to be. So we're monitoring mental health uh, diversion cases and we're monitoring, um, starting to monitor some other diversion cases. Oh, but the veterans diversion cases as well. So in our veterans court, they have both uh, clients on diversion as well as on supervised probation. And we're providing basic monitoring for those as well. Troy just sent me a message as well. We also supervise um, sex offense crime. So even if it's a misdemeanor uh, sex offense crime, we, we supervise those as well. But there are uh, probably right about 950 people on supervised probation in Marin right now. And there's probably three times that as much in the court systems. Thank you. I don't know, we have about nine minutes, so if we have any more questions. How many employees are there in your department? We have, if you look at, we have also extra help employees, so we're at about 138 plus staff because we have other auxiliary staff, or some are sworn and some are non-sworn. No, the military is not an alternative to probation. Do we have any more questions from the audience today? Can you take a moment and tell us a little about your speakers program to our kids in school? So the Speakers Bureau was bred off of basically, um, I was asked to speak at a Menlo school by someone, one of my friends actually had reached out to me and said, Marlon, I would like you to speak at our school because we do presentations to our students on different topics. And this is during the Black Lives Matters movement. And you're a new chief and I would like you to come and speak to my class. And I said, well, I could do you something better than that. I could actually come and speak to you, but I know uh, a DA, a district attorney, as well as a public defender. And we could all come and talk to you from three different perspectives as we all work together. So that conversation actually we did. And then we spoke to Tamalpais street law class. And from there, people heard about the program. And then we were at a SLEP meeting, which is student law, the school law enforcement uh, partnership meeting. And it was brought up by our assistant DA, Otis Bruce. And he talked to them about our speaking at these different classrooms and different events. And that's what it bred from. And it's not only to talk about law enforcement, it's also to talk about the career opportunities in law enforcement. So we talk about how to become a probation officer, how to become a DA, how to become a public defender, and those different trajectories based on what you want to do and those explorations of where we all started from. And we all kind of share in the fact that we started as entry level positions and worked our way up through our careers. And also times the challenges that we may face being uh, men of color actually and working our way up in a predominantly not diverse field. Uh, so we talk about that and we share that story and we've actually, you know, it encourages youth 
to see that you can achieve things, you can do things. And oftentimes people think there's a glass ceiling and you know, there are glass ceilings, but those are things that we had to break and actually achieve. And it's amazing to see that dynamic of that conversation, how it goes. Uh, Liddell Dangerfield who speaks is also bilingual and he's able to connect with some of the populations that we can't all the way connect with through having those conversations, you know, and that's very important and that's very encouraging. And we have a very diverse staff in our probation department. And I think that's very important to what you do. We diversify our panels and our recruitment. And I bring this all to that speakers bureau is when you see someone on the other side of the table that looks like you, you're encouraged to think you can do that and you can achieve that as well. So that's part of the reason behind the Speakers Bureau and everything we do is providing opportunity and showcasing what we can do. How many schools have you visited since this program began? Well, some have been virtual, so I can tell you the number of schools. And what it is, is for us, we didn't do every single school and every speaking engagement. We actually asked for other speakers to come in and everyone to be able to share their story because a lot of people were interested in becoming a part of the Speakers Bureau so they have the opportunity to go out and engage at the different schools throughout Moran County. Alternative schools as well. That's great. If we have no other questions, I would like to sincerely thank Chief Washington, Ms. Krupinski, Mr. Olson, and Ms. Creighton for joining us tonight. I will again comment on the generosity of this department and all of the county agencies that have been kind enough to set aside time to make a short recording of what they do, talk about it, and make it available to the public. I will note that next month we are lucky to have the Marin Conservation Corps, and that is the group that supports the North Bay and also works with kids. Um, for anybody who did any volunteering during the last two years of the pandemic, if you were involved with the food bank in any way, you saw large numbers of folks that were sent from the Conservation Corps. You see them doing work in our community on a daily basis, and these are kids that don't necessarily come from backgrounds of affluence here in Marin County. We often assume that everybody gets an equal leg up, and as we look around, as we have conversations like we did today, we begin to understand that there are a good many challenges that are facing our community. And we're very, very lucky to have organizations like the Conservation Corps and indeed the Marin County Department of Probation come to us tonight. So I would encourage everyone to be appreciative of these groups and to know that this will be a recording that's available both to the Department of Probation and on our YouTube station. I thank you all and I wish you the best of evenings. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And now.